Hey everybody, we're here to go ahead and talk about uh, basically removing your heatsink off of your RAM and then installing it into a water-cooled RAM block as part of our how to cool a water-cooled PC. So you can see that basically these two sides pull apart on this particular type. The majority of them, they work this way. There's just some adhesive on either side uh, that sticks to the chips. You can see there's still some residue stuck on this one. We'll talk about removing that as well. Now, what I like to do is use some heat to actually go ahead and remove this. We're going to heat up both sides of it. You can use a hair dryer as well, but I'll be using a hot air soldering iron. It's basically the same thing. We're going to go ahead and cut this sticker across the top to make it easier when we go to pry the heat sink fins off of the RAM. This is Corsair Vengeance RAM. Go ahead and take our heat gun and get it nice and warm. And we're not going to put this on until it's excessively hot. Really the goal is, is just to loosen the adhesive that's holding this on. Now the adhesive is actually a thermal pad, but it's pretty sticky stuff they've put on to keep this attached. I'm just going to get it nice and warm. Now basically what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and separate these fins. Now if you don't have one of these, this is a nylon spudger. Get them for a couple of bucks off eBay. You can see that just putting it in between the fins and separating them out, we're going to go ahead and pull it apart. And then we're going to put our spudger down on top of the chip and just pull it back a little bit. See it start to flex. Now you want to be careful as you do this. You don't want to damage the chips along the bottom. There's little tiny resistors and capacitors and things that are on this. So you want to be careful with it as you're removing this. So I'm only putting the spudger on top of the actual chip itself. I'm being pretty gentle when I'm prying it apart. I'm not saying you can't put a little bit of force into it. They are pretty sturdy items, but I wouldn't say you want to dry rip it off. So I'm just going to put it in and wiggle it back and forth. You can see it's starting to pry back. Just being gentle to get the glue to release for us. So you can see right here how it was stuck to the chips. And all along the sides here are those little tiny chips you want to be careful of. And on this back side, sometimes it'll, it'll actually dissipate its heat pretty quick, which is what the point of this whole entire thing is. You can see the chips here. So if it's a little sturdy, it's a little still tacked on, what I would suggest doing is just giving a little bit more heat on this side. We're just going to go ahead and get it nice and warm. I unplugged my soldering iron, unfortunately, so I'm just going to plug it back in here and get started. So again, not excessive amounts of heat. We're just going to get it nice and warm. Go ahead and take our pry tool and put it in here again. I'm just being gentle as we do this. So we're just going to get it start to peel back. You can peel it off further. Now one thing that I should always tell everybody is make sure that you've tested your RAM before you start doing this. You want to make sure that it's fully functional. You didn't get a, a DOA or a bad stick. So make sure you test it before you start removing it out of its heat sink. It might uh, avoid your warranty there. Just peeling it off nice and slow. There we have it. So there is our stick of RAM outside of its heat sink. The next step is to go ahead and remove the remaining adhesive that's on top of it. So you can see that there's little bits of, basically it looks like tape residue. Now I just like to take a, a nylon spudger and just pull it back. 
Try to get it all nice and cleaned up. The reason why you want to do this is you don't want this pulling the chip away from the new thermal tape we're going to put on top of this. So you want to make sure you get it nice and clean. You don't want any residual glue or adhesive left on top of these. You need to make sure you do it on all of the chips. I'm going to go ahead and jump forward and talk about putting it into the heat sink that comes with the RAM block. So here is the top of the block itself where the fittings put in and then where this makes contact to the top of this housing for the RAM. So you can see right now here we have our new thermal pads. We're just going to rip the backing off and lay it on top. We have our two screws to go ahead and clamp this back together. And Bits Power did include a small Allen screwdriver. So the first step, and the way that I like to do it is to put the RAM into the female portion of the housing. So we're just going to peel back the backing on top of this thermal tape. It's pretty thin stuff, the backing, so it can be a little bit tricky. I'm going to go ahead and lay it right on top of the chips. I'm going to make sure it covers all of them. This stuff is almost like a putty, if you've never dealt with it before. It kind of feels a little oily or a little putty. Now really, when you're removing the backing off of this, it's going to expand itself a little bit. There's not a lot you can do about it. I haven't really found the best way to remove the backing without it gaining a little bit in length, uh, besides just doing it slow. You can see it pulled off fairly quick there. You can see it expanded a little bit on the right side. It's not the end of the world. We'll just go ahead and peel off just a tiny bit of it. We're just going to go ahead and center it back on here real quick. With that done, we're going to go ahead and put it into its housing. I'm going to go ahead and just butt it up right at the top. Make sure it's centered left to right. Then we're going to take our second strip of our thermal tape, thermal compound here. And do the exact same thing. Now I did find it easier to actually put the tape on top of the RAM itself and then pull the backing off. It seemed like that just worked a little bit better. So we'll go ahead and do that first. Try to hold it down and peel it back. So what you can do is basically just move it a little tiny bit, hold it down, move it a little bit more. If you're worried about it uh, extending a little bit. Now truly your RAM's not going to get excessively hot unless you're doing extreme overclocking on it. Go ahead and put our back plate on here. Then we're going to go ahead and insert the two screws that came with the kit. Make sure it's nice and lined up. Now with this excessive thermal compound, I'm just going to use a razor blade that's flat to go ahead and just kind of trim it up and then pull it off. Now 
Now, if for some reason you have damaged the thermal compound to the point where it's not making contact with the actual housing, then that is an issue. You may want to purchase some more and then try again. But normally it uh, comes a little bit thicker just for that reason. Now we're going to do this exact same process for the remaining sticks. I have a total of four. We'll just do the exact same thing for all four. And basically what we're going to do is go ahead and remove these and then put them into our motherboard. Let's go ahead and pop all four of them in just like you would any other RAM stick. Now it's not the end of the world if the back plates aren't all facing the same direction. I did two of them in one direction then two of them the other direction. What you do want to make sure is is that all the screw holes on top line up. As close as possible. So when we go to put the top lock on, we don't have any issues screwing that down. So now we have all four of our RAM sticks in with its new water cooled housing. And the next step is to take some thinner thermal tape in width and then put them on top of these sticks here so you can see exactly how much smaller they are in width so you, basically this is going to transfer the heat from the top of these housings into the RAM block itself we're going to do the same thing as go ahead and pull the housing back or the backing off of these uh, thermal tape strips here it does make it easy if you have something a little bit sharper if you don't have any fingernails like me We're going to try to get this as much contact on top of the block as possible. So put it as close to the screw hole. Make sure you don't cover it up. You do want to leave a little tiny gap underneath it for expansion. You're going to tighten this down on top or underneath the block. So it's going to gain a little bit more once it gets squished and tightened underneath that. So you can see it's a little bit longer. Go ahead and peel the backing off of this top strip here. And it doesn't necessarily matter if it's exactly straight, but you want to make sure that it's covering the top. We'll just cut it again with our razor blade to make sure it's nice and even. We're going to do the exact same thing for the remaining three strips. If it does have a pretty big curve, you can just kind of try to pull it back a little bit. Make sure you put it right on top of the four sticks itself. We're going to go ahead and put the remaining three on here off camera so we don't waste anybody's time. Ta-da! Oh, movie magic. The next step is to take our RAM block housing. So we're going to take this and we're going to line it up with the four screw holes on top of each of the housings for the RAM sticks. You want to make sure that it's nice and even you want to make sure it's nice and straight so you get a good look on the interior of your case as well. The also important thing is you want to make sure you have it in the correct direction that you want it to face. You don't want to have any uh, issues or, or having to remove it. So we're going to go ahead and put our screws in. We have a total of eight. Now the trick to this is, I think, to put it in kind of like lug nuts on a car. So we're going to put them in loose first. We're not going to tighten them down extremely tight. We're just going to get them snug and then we're going to go across and we're going to tighten them down in a crisscross or a star pattern. Uh, that way, if you tighten one side all the way, then you tighten the other side, the other side might become loose or it'll be lopsided. You want to make as much contact with that thermal pad underneath as possible. You want it to be as flat as possible. And the best way to do that is to lower it down evenly on top of the ram sticks.
not extremely tight, just nice and snug. There's a few more screws to go. We're getting nice and close here to the end. Let's make sure they're all about the exact same tightness. My block was a little lopsided there. I wasn't happy with it. So I'm just going to straighten it back out a little tiny bit. Now we're going to go ahead and start tightening these down in a crisscross pattern. And that's it. That's how you install the RAM block into your cooling unit. If you found the video helpful, hit the like button. If you have questions, throw them down in the comments. I always appreciate you watching. More videos in the description.